Stop using five apps to manage your marketing. Meet Simplified One. It's an AI-powered all-in-one platform for creators and small businesses to design, make videos, and publish content to all social media platforms. Visit simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. To find out more, point your browser to www.princubator.com or look us up at Annika Jackson PR. Thanks for joining us for another week of Your Brand Amplified, and I am here today with Matthew Hunt from Automation Wolf. Welcome, Matthew. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I'm really interested in your story. You know, I was on your website looking at what you do, how you deliver it, but I want to hear how the heck you went into the business that you're in. Uh, Sure. So, I mean, I sort of stumbled into being an entrepreneur um, by accident. It was just through sheer pain (laughs) of not enjoying um, what I was doing or looking for a better way, like most entrepreneurs, right? (laughs) So it wasn't a planned thing. This is actually my third business. And I started the first one in 2010. And I started it because I was a door-to-door salesperson and I really didn't like doing uh, door-to-door sales. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. And so, well, tell me a little bit more about, so you, you, you're a natural salesperson, you were doing door-to-door sales. What was your first business? What was your second business? And then what led you to Automation Wolf and decided that this was, you know, there was a hole in the market that needed this service? Yeah, sure. So the first business, like I sold uh, uh, point of sale terminals, merchant processing for uh, small businesses to accept credit cards mm-hmm. and, and debit. And so that job is a straight commissions job. And Mm -hmm. at the time, sort of between 2007 and 2010, the environment of how they sold was to get a bunch of salespeople into a room and they would rally you up in the morning and then send you out on the street to sell, (laughs) right? And so the whole, it was a whole numbers game. So we would not that the whole trick was knock a hundred doors, make a couple sales. And and it worked. The running running the numbers worked. However, after doing it after a while, it's like, yeah, this is not that in, enjoyable. And so without knowing I was an entrepreneur yet, I was looking for ways to make it easier for myself. I'm a little yeah. So <laughs> so I said, you know what, instead of going out every day, why don't I just jump on the phone and open the yellow pages and <laughs> start calling people. Because then they're making appointments and then that way I only have to be out, um, you know, speaking to people one or two days out of the week. And I could just be at in the comfort of my home. And so I literally just opened up the yellow pages and started dialing for dollars, self-inflicted telemarketing. Yeah. And, but it, I didn't have a better way, but I thought it was a more efficient use of my time. And it worked, but after doing that for a while and getting hung up on the phone or people yelling, I was like, ah, there's gotta be a better way. So then I started actually spamming people's voicemails because I discovered something called voice broadcasting. And Mm -hmm. back then, before there was cool technology, you actually had to buy PC computers and a special software that would scrape yellow pages. And then the computer would like dial out. So I had three PC computers and went, do, 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 do. And they'd all be calling <laughs> at these businesses and leaving voicemails on their their answer machines um, if they didn't pick up. So mm-hmm. they so it didn't even work that well because now you can just drop it without even making the phone ring. It's much easier today mm-hmm. to leave that kind of message or send an SMS message, SMS message today. But back then I didn't know. And it worked great, except for, of course, I pissed off a whole bunch of people in doing it. So I said, ah, there's got to be a better way than spamming people's voice boxes. And Mm -hmm. so I was thinking, I'm on Google all the time. People need to be searching for this stuff by now. And so then I was like, I'm going to build a website and uh, figure out how to run ads. And so I bought a book called The Definitive Guide to Google AdWords by Perry Marshall. It was my gateway drug into digital (laughs) marketing. I got a friend that built me a one page, you know, website, which today would actually be considered a, a marketing funnel page or a squeeze page. But back then I didn't know what it was. It was super ass long copy. 
and I would run ads and I was running ads before all the big institutions and banks did. And before I knew it, I was like an order taker. And I was like, ah, there you go. Yeah, (laughs) the, the, The penny dropped and I was like, this is great. And so I started getting obsessed about digital marketing and mm-hmm. uh, every penny I end, I end up being the top salesperson at the organization they had no idea how I was doing the sales <laughs> I hired a person to be the order taker for me so that I could study all day oh digital marketing gosh. so then I taught myself how to do html and build wordpress websites I taught myself how to do seo and that was the hot things at the time and so I built my first agency for small businesses which was doing local SEO and running um, AdWords. And it was great because I was so new to it. It's 2010. I mean, it was really, really easy to rank websites. I mean, literally, if you just had the keyword in your title tag and had a good meta description, clicks were cheap. I mean, it couldn't have been any easier. I didn't even have to be good at it, which I wasn't. I was not (laughs) good at it. And so I did that for four years and I grew it into a very substantial business to the point that it was over my head and I was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And so I merged the company with a company that was bigger than mine with uh, two other people who had much more business acumen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I worked uh, at that organization um, as, as the... Uh, as a director of operations and then moved into the CMO position and still had some ownership in the business. And then I exited that business in 2018 after really learning how to run a real business and ran that one for four years. And, wow. um, and then took a year off and then uh, too young to retire, have young kids at school, mm. need something to do. <laughs> I haven't hit the magic number that I think that I want to hit financially. So I was like, might as well build another uh, business. Yeah. And so um, what I ended up building was I ended up building an agency for agencies. And now we focus on personal uh, branding, as well as demand gen activities that help a lot of B2B companies um, grow, but this could apply to just about any business, these mm-hmm. strategies. And we really live in the sweet spot of demand gen. So I have a lot of experience with outbound. I have a lot of experience with inbound. And I think that, you know, the secret sauce is actually the thing that sits in the middle called demand gen. If you sell B2B, if you have a long buying cycle, high ticket price products, demand gen is where you want to live. Obviously, you know, if you like spamming people, you can do outbound. And then, you know, for anything that's B2C, inbound is sort of the right strategy and some demand gen as well, too. Nice. Yeah, I think that is but you've hit on so many things that really resonate with me. My first job outside of babysitting <laughs> kids in the neighborhood was working for a carpet cleaning business where we, nice. it was, I was, I think 14, but I was like, I want to work and make my own money. And we were calling people from the phone book and just kept yeah. on calling, calling. And then, you know, if you hit, if you got somebody to say yes, then, um, now, I don't know if this is Kansas or a small business or what it was, but you would, we had a, a dartboard and you would throw a dart to see wherever it landed, that's what you would get for your bonus. So oh, you know, I, was, I was very young <laughs> and I just wanted to make money. And um, it's not, it's, you know, it was a good, I can't say it was a good experience, but it was definitely an experience and it made me comfortable cold calling people, which I think yeah. is a skill every entrepreneur needs, totally. uh, whether you want to or not. And then as businesses, As marketers, we are often the worst at marketing ourselves because we just don't have the time. We're too busy focusing on our clients. And so finding new ways and strategies to reach our ideal clients is important. Yeah, yeah, totally. The trick is, so here's the the trick. So even with my second agency, because we're a marketing agency, I, I... we were so busy exactly that taking care of your team and taking care of your clients. You have the cobbler's shoes, the cobbler's kid's shoe goes with those shoes syndrome <laughs> is what it's called. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, you do everybody else's, but yours always gets left to last and never happens. And so I lost two years of major momentum mm-hmm. because I refused to outsource some of the work. And what I realized, I mean, I was a little bit embarrassed because why would, should a marketing company have to outsource their own marketing to someone else? I finally bit the bullet. And even though it wasn't done exactly the way I would have wanted it done, 80% of done is better than not done. And <laughs> then we started getting some momentum going. And so this is a very common problem for most, you know, uh, marketing companies or business owners who are running their business. If it's not their core competency, exactly. they really shouldn't be doing it. Should They should be thinking about outsourcing it to those that one are going to be accountable to it because they're getting paid. 
and then two, where it's their expertise. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's not your core expertise, you sure, certainly shouldn't be doing it. And even then, if it is your core, the answer is still outsource it because you're too busy taking care of your team and, and your clients. Exactly. Yeah. So talk to me about Automation Wolf. Sure. Yeah. So, so we have Automation Wolf. Like I said, now we focus on personal branding and demand gen, and we follow some very specific core strategies that are evergreen. So, and then the way I weight them on whether someone should participate in them or not is based on effort and impact. So again, most of the clients we work with are entrepreneurs who are busy CEOs and founders. So they don't come in with a necessarily a, um, a budget Ooh. or they come in from doing everything from the ground up. And they're still in that sort of stage somewhere between growing between a startup to a stay up. Mm -hmm. Occasionally we have some clients who are in the stay up and moving into the scale up mode, but rarely we're working with those entrepreneurs where their biggest problem the thing that 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 holds them back is time, right? So there's just not enough seconds in every minute, not enough minutes in each hour, not enough hours in each day, not enough days in each month yeah. and so forth but to just get it all done. And so what we've been really good at doing is creating a program that's a done for you service that's white glove. And we're super constant. We're, we're su like certainly very cognizant of their time issue. And so we start everybody off with the first product, which is personal branding and, and, and particularly on LinkedIn. And what we do is we help them create all of their content, their demand gen snackable content for LinkedIn in hmm. one and a half hours per month. And the way wow. we do it is we interview them once a month via Zoom, help them you know, and what's beautiful is because they get the practices in private, they get rewarded, you know, publicly. And we only keep the good stuff with that. Those little, those interviews, we turn them into snackle pieces of content, video content, and then it inspires the text, the images, the polls and everything else. And then we post it. And what ends up happening is two major things. So one is because they are consistent with posting to their warm network, they stay top of mind. Because they're consistent with practicing with us, they get to articulate their 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 message, their value yeah. prop, and how they communicate. So it makes them a more effective leader internally to their team, mm -hmm. to their existing clients, okay, as well as to their warm network and any new clients that are coming in. So there's they almost become sort of what I call media trained, you know, from doing yeah. this for five or six months with us, and because they're consistent. And they follow our ACES method, which just stands for authority, connect, engage, and show, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they follow that, we're playing all the right notes on the piano to make them likable. And then because they are consistent and they're likable over time, they end up earning trust or what I call trust equity. And as we know, people only buy from people that they know, like, mm -hmm. and trust. And yeah. so the transformation is that they end up getting quite a few awesome leads and sales, even if they suck at sales, <laughs> but they could be the worst salesperson in the world because all the pre-selling is already be done. And the goal isn't to get, you know, most people make the mistake of, I want more leads, more clients, more customers. Mm -hmm. And that's not actually the right, the right answer. Like, you know, so if you're in B2B business and you're trying to get more leads, you don't want 10, 20, 30 leads when time is an issue and you're yeah. still probably doing the majority of the sales. What you want is two leads and two that close per exactly. week. Exactly. You don't want 20. 20 is just a lot of noise. And so what ends up happening if you do inbound and outbound marketing is you get some of this low hanging fruit, but they're just treating you like a commodity and all you're doing is wasting your time. If you can let it go and go, I don't need 20 leads. I need two leads. Ones that are pre-sold. <laughs> then you can then sell clients really easily because they're pre-sold yeah. before they see you because they're more like referrals mm -hmm. and you can charge more, which is brilliant. So most yeah. people come into my funnel. The first call is always like this. I've been watching your stuff for a while. <laughs> You're smart. And this can be the easiest sales call for you in the world, but I have two questions or three questions. We answer the questions and we do the kickoff and we start, we start getting going. Now, isn't that much nicer than having to follow up and do all this rigor mare and all this other crap that's there? And, and that's the reality. The reality is most people built their business through referrals and relationships. They just didn't find a way to systemize it. And so that would be like the first step. I call that crawling in the demand gen system mm -hmm. right and so you got to crawl before you walk yep. and walk before you run and then if you're like my kids right who are now like you know you know 10 12 and 14 they start doing backflips off the shelf <laughs> right? they crack their head open so but if you skip the steps 
then you actually get it out of order. And so there's other things you can do after that. And the things that you do after that would be running some ads and then it would be doing the interview strategy and then it would be building a community and leveraging some more virtual summits type things like that. These are all strategies that allow you to do one to many selling because yeah. you don't have time. And, it's, and they're all in the order that they go in require more of your time each time. So we're always trying to balance the balancing act between you know, effort and impact. And what we want to do is we want our clients focused on the thing that requires the least amount of effort on their half with the most amount of impact where they can stay consistent. And if they can do those two things and stay consistent, then they experience what's called the compound effect, right? And as time yeah. goes on, it gets better and better and better and better. And if you look at the compound effect, the graph, it's all in the long tail. It's I all love this. Being consistent. Yeah, it, it, this is the same exact thing that we tell prospective clients is in the PR world, even you have to start with the foundation. We always yep. start with the marketing foundation, make sure that they have their marketing messages really tight, because if they don't, it's going to make our job a lot harder. If they're like, well, I wanted this this week. No, I'm doing this. And, and a lot of people are multi multipreneurs, right? Serial yeah. entrepreneurs, they have their hands in a lot of different things. Um, and so they haven't honed in on their specialty. And so we always say, well, we're going to start here and then we'll build you up because you're not ready to go into Forbes yet. You're not, they all want to get into the high publications, but you have to take the steps to get there. And I think what's really interesting about what you just said is a lot of companies that try to sell coaching or marketing services to other businesses start with do the high touch Facebook group or do, you know, do this, do that, build up this group of engaged people. And then you're right. That's so high touch. You have to be involved on a daily basis. You have to be yeah. providing content. And so the strategies you're talking about make a lot more sense um, because as you grow the business, then you can hire more people to do the other stuff. And you're not like most of us who are working on the business and in the business at the same time. That's right. So the order is this. So most people don't understand is they're actually in a startup stage. If they're still in the operations and yeah. managing the day-to-day -day activities and the people who do operations, they're in startup. How you get to stay up is this is when they can just focus on marketing, sales, and talent acquisition. And then how they get from stay up to startup is when they get out of the role of marketing sales and talent acquisition and those are sort of the three stages to growing every business mm -hmm. and usually you probably look at it like you know a million to a million and a half for most of these businesses is probably the startup stage and then from a million and a half to five million is the stay up and then once they get beyond five million they can start spending some money and start focusing on scaling up to hit 10 20 100 million and and whatever it is that they they desire right at that point but they usually just they're they're not recognizing where they are and yeah. and what's actually realistic and, and and the problem is i have also made that mistake of allowing clients to pick and choose from a menu of what interests them mm -hmm. and it, it basically sets them up to fail and so i learned the simple you know uh filter to always judge it by impact and effort. And so one of my number one questions when I talk to people, I said, how much time do you have to dedicate to this each month? And if the answer, based on that, I can tell them what strategies they can deploy. They're all great strategies. They all need to be done, but we need to be constant of like that, that time thing. It's a real constraint. You know, it's a real, real problem. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. I, I'm in that <laughs> point right now where I'm like, okay, now I'm moving on to the next phase. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, so, totally. Yeah. So what besides helping um, businesses become better at business, what inspires and motivates you? That's a great question. I mean, so I, I'm one of these very lucky people who gets to do something that they love doing. I would, I would do this even if I didn't get paid. Don't tell anyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. So, so, so that's quite a wonderful thing. And I'm, I've been lucky enough in life to have had a previous exit that there's not the financial pressures as well mm -hmm. to, to just necessarily have to rush in to do something. I was able to take the time to really figure it out. So, so that's, it's very enjoyable to work with other entrepreneurs, particularly those in B2B businesses, because those are my people. Like I get it. Like, basically I built this product for myself. <laughs> it was like, I would have loved to have had this at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I saw the pain points of what they were really going through. And so it's quite rewarding to, to work with them mm -hmm. in, in this way and see their transformation, you know, seeing the, the aha moments and you see them drop at different times, you know, because we all have our own lens. We all have our own narratives. We all have our own experiences. 
and we hear and see things and have different epiphanies at different times, but it's, it's quite magical to uh, kind of see that transformation. You know, it's the, it's a little butterfly yeah. um, experience. And so that brings me great joy um, to be able to be a part of that and witness that and, and a part of that journey to some degree. I mean, obviously I don't do it all, but I'm just a very small piece of the giant pie of the things that these people uh, have the courage to do right every single day. Nice. I love that. Um, it, I think it's so important uh, to be living in a space where you can achieve your goals, you can dream big, but you can also really love what you're doing and feel that yeah. sense of purpose every day in your business. So that's really beautiful. And I also love that you talk about the authenticity and you know being a trusted brand, because that's something so many people are afraid to share their story. So I feel like in many ways, you and I are on um, different sides of that parallel of, because we're always saying, you have to share your story. That's people want to know who you are, not just yeah. that you have amazing cookies or hair color or whatever the product is. They want to know who and why you created this. What were the pain yeah. points? What happened that made you think this is a problem that needed to be solved? Totally. Yeah. Well, it's like, just like Simon Sinek says, right? <laughs> you know, we don't care what you do until we know why you're doing it. Yeah. Right. And just exactly. like, we don't hear you until we know how much you care and all of these other things. So we're, we're human beings at the end of the day, and we're yeah. motivated by stories and interesting stories. And everybody has one and everybody has an unfair advantage. They just don't always necessarily recognize it, or maybe they don't think it's attractive, or they suffer from a little bit of imposter syndrome, or they're more private introverts types people, and they don't want to share that. They just want to share their expertise. But at the end of the day, if you can peel it back and hit the heart, the gut, or the funny bone, <laughs> we we buy from people at the end of the day. That's what we want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what is next? Well, for me right now with this business, we're just at the tail end of that startup stage. So mm -hmm. I'm just in the process of getting out of operations altogether and fine tuning all of the uh, processes. And I should be out by the end of the year. And next year for me, I'll just be focused on the fun stuff, which is marketing. For me, it is anyways, marketing, mm -hmm. sales and talent acquisition. And we'll be in that stage for probably about a year, maybe, maybe two. And then and then we can look at possibly a scale up. And so because I've done this before, when I get to the scale up stage, it means that I need to get the hell out and hire <laughs> other people to run the company, mm -hmm. like a proper, you know, uh, a president or CEO and a proper, you know, operations person. I am certainly not the right person to be doing those particular things. I'm not good at it, um, <laughs> nor, nor do I even really actually enjoy it. And then I'll know that we'll have some sort of business asset and, um, uh, the, the world's your oyster at that point. I don't know. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, how, what's the easiest way for people to follow you, to get in touch with you, to yeah. really dig into the work that you're doing? Yeah. I'm really only active on one place, which is LinkedIn mm -hmm. uh, socially. So you can find me there. If you just search for Matthew Hunt, I should come up. And you can also find me at automationwolf.com. There's only one page that's there, a single landing page with a single VSL with some testimonials. Yep. There's nothing else you can do except for watch the video or get in touch with me. Yeah, I think that's really important as well, because <laughs> I think sometimes we overcomplicate our own stuff. I mean, I look at my own website and I'm like, I love the design aesthetic. And we do a lot of graphic design and work for our clients, but I'm also like, maybe I need to, I need to simplify it a little bit so that people understand right, you know, from the get-go. So I yeah. think that, that's good that you have that simplified message. And I think that's really important for people who are listening to understand as well. You've dr dropped so much um, really amazing knowledge today. I really appreciate you being here. Um, Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate yeah. it. And last, well, last but not least, um, is there anything else that you want to cover? And what's your favorite quote? So two, oh. two little last things. Oh, quote. So <laughs> so many. There's, there's so many uh, uh, great ones. I, I think probably my most favorite person that I'd love to quote the most is Oscar Wilde, mm. yeah, who's quite cheeky. Um, and he's wrote many classic plays way back when. And I think mm -hmm. that there's... Uh, my favorite one is the man who thinks his wife has no sense of humor has forgotten that she married him. That's probably <laughs> my favorite one. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know what that says about you or, <laughs> but, uh, I think is life, life is short. You don't yeah. have a dress for her. So have a little bit of fun along yeah, the way. Absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, this is all just silly stuff. That's not going to matter. Go home, hug your kids, hug yeah. your partner, you know, all that warm, fuzzy stuff. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Matthew, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. 
Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And audience, we'll be back again next week. Thanks again for listening. And you can learn more about Matthew in the show notes. And don't forget to go to automationwolf.com. Want more tips and tricks? Check us out online at www.annikapr.com, on social media at Annika Jackson PR, or join our three-month PR Incubator Bootcamp for small businesses via www.princubator.com. Editing long podcasts like this or webinars for social is time-consuming. Simplified AI Clips uses AI to turn your lengthy videos into short, viral clips. Create shareable content from your recordings in a few minutes. Built for small businesses and marketers looking to save time and boost engagement, visit Simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today.